bed, man, I don't know. I was screaming Godspeed and Geronimo. Now everything I see is covered in Java codes. Leave it to LC3 to interpret through these hottest lava flows. Like I'm in Hawaii. What's up, folks? Um, Pastor Jay here. Uh, Pastor Jay podcast is probably what you're expecting to hear, and you're sort of going to, but... Um, we are making a big shift, a big change that we're excited about into the Gamers Table podcast. Yep. I've got some friends with me. We're going to explain uh, why the Gamers Table, what that is, what's going on, why the shift, why the change, is it helpful, is it necessary, and yep. what it means for the future of the podcast. Yeah, right on. My name's Christian. Um, also probably know me as Druid Crafts if you've been on any of our streams and stuff previously. Uh, yep. We've done a lot of gaming together. Yeah, right on. And my name is Joe. You'll see me pop up here and there uh, as Toasty49. Right That's on. A fun name. All right, I want to go ahead and, and just say this. Um, this is going to be, you know, we hope almost every podcast we do, if you're listening to this or watching it, that it, it does feel uh, pretty organic, um, pretty natural, that we're not overly planning this stuff. Man, we want to be as authentic as we can with you guys. Um, this podcast will probably be a bit more authentic than usual. Yeah. Um, I don't mean that as in to say we're going to get emotional or anything weird like that's going to happen, but just we, we really want to uh, share our hearts with you guys um, on why the shift, uh, because it is important to us, uh, for you listening. I, I know how just absorbing and and intaking content is. For most people, they're like, just give me the good stuff and let me move on. And yeah. that might be you. If it is, this may not be quite the podcast for you. I don't know. I hope you stick around to listen because I think it will add some value to your life. Um, but we did want to go over, uh, you know, what's going on in our lives, man? What's going on with, um, you know, if you've been following me on Twitch, Pastor Jay Online, um, again, listening to any of these podcasts, Pastor Jay Podcast, you're going to see some transition be, be made. You're going to see a rebranding begin to happen into the gamers table. We've got some big hopes and dreams that we won't even share here, you know, what the future might look like um, for all that. But at least for now, for what we're putting out content-wise online, um, I'll say this for myself, I definitely learned pretty quick that it's pretty silly to try and do any of this alone or try to shoulder it alone. And that's some things you guys don't know is these two guys sitting with me have been a part of this thing the whole time, whether it's through putting stuff together and, and you know, creating and, and cutting and crafting things for us to actually put out there, whether it's somebody that I talk to, somebody that writes content for us for the website, all these things. These guys have been a part of it the whole way. Um, but to truly do what we hope to see done with this content, man, we need to do it together. We need yeah. to um, rebrand things and make it hopefully carry more weight than it would have otherwise. Yeah. Um, so the gamers table is, is something where we've landed on actually the last podcast we did there was some talk of this um, but now this one's coming to you um, fully fresh with what's about to happen I even have you can probably barely see it um, the gamers table got some swag <laughs> yeah uh, ready to go so let me give you this story um, I'm just gonna kind of take control for the first few minutes uh, you guys bear with me yeah, right on. Um, so my wife and I moved across the country and now it's almost 10 years I think actually um, to start a church with some friends. I won't tell you the whole story, but there's one moment in this in this story that was so significant for me. Um, I've always been a gamer, and uh, as we were making this transition, again, moving across the country, leaving friends, family, all this kind of stuff, um, I wanted to make new friends. I wanted to essentially create new family, if I could say that. And so I began to meet some guys and uh, met some dudes that were gamers, and so we had some, some things in common like that. Um, the one thing we did not have in common, though, was the console of choice that we would play. <laughs> and like any good, you know, church starter, church planter, if you know what that word is, um, like any good, you know, hopeful pastor trying to reach people for the good Lord Jesus, you know, um, I said, okay, I will forego, I will forsake Sony PlayStation and I will go buy, <laughs> I will go buy an Xbox. Yeah, Microsoft yeah. will have my allegiance for now, okay? Yep. Um, so I went and bought an Xbox. Um, seriously, no joke. Again, I'm a gamer. I wanted a game. Selfishly, that's fine for me. But um, I bought an Xbox One. I never I, the, the first game I bought was Dying Light. Um, second game I bought, I think, was Destiny. And I just jumped in and wanted to get to know these guys and play. And so relationships began to be built. And I'll be honest, to fill in the gaps from there to here, all I'll say is um, just everything changed. Yeah. And I think... Um, our lives changed um, to the point where I've been able to see, you know, some of these dudes get married. I've been a part of that. I mean, all these things. Um, this was actually before you came along, and then you came along shortly after. And yep. 
you know, it just, the, you know, our lives changed, um, I would say, because we decided to allow a common interest to catalyze our lives together. And then we didn't just allow that common interest to be what held it all together. Yeah. Because if we tried to do that, it would have fallen pretty quickly, right? But we had something else that was the undercurrent of our lives, something that was driving us um, to a greater and higher purpose. And that's really what I think began to change everything. Uh, namely, we weren't pursuing video games in different areas and realms of life, man, the three of us and even others that have been involved in this story, you know, we were actually, at the end of the day, we were trying to pursue Jesus. Yeah. And that's what kept us going. And so here we are today. So I just want to share that quick story to say that there's a lot of uh, foundation that's here, even with the three of us that you see on the screen or that you're listening to. A lot of things, a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, a lot of apologies, a lot of fun, a lot of all kinds of stuff, right, to get us yeah. here. But we want to do our best, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably be quiet for a minute, but I'll, I think we want to do our best to, to take that story that's ours, plenty more details we could share, but take that story and, and truly invite more people um, to come have a seat at the table, man, to come sit down with us and, and say your life can change, not to say you're going to be a better gamer, not to say you're going to have even more fun or more friendships, but that the fun you're going to have is going to mean something. The relationships you're going to have, they're going to mean something, you know, and, and that we don't have to be afraid um, to let the Lord work in those things. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit of my story, and you guys can stop me anytime now and just share anything you'd like, and then we'll get to talking about the gamer's table. Uh, specifically yeah i know for me um jake already kind of alluded to it you know i moved i moved here in uh, 2015 so um, about a year after they did and uh was kind of the same deal like I, I knew nobody i had no family i had no friends i was kind of this loner person in this new environment and very quickly like the like the day i moved here i ended up meeting you and i don't even remember how it happened and it was kind of like Hey, do you do you play video games? I'm like, yeah, I got an Xbox. Oh, we should connect. Here's my gamer tag, right? And um, something that <laughs> probably in the moment seems so insignificant. Yeah. For, um, I mean, it, it genuinely changed my life. You know, it. Um, you know, it, it built a relationship with the two of you that. I mean, if I, we don't even have the time to go into all the details, I mean, almost mm-hmm. a better part of a decade. But it genuinely changed the trajectory of my life and who I am, the man I am today, the things I even partake in, I engage in. Mm. Um, and because of that, this is something that's really passionate, a, a big passion yeah. for me. If it, if yeah. it made this impact for me, man, I don't want that to just end with me. You know, if, if I have an opportunity yeah. to at least offer it to other people, um, I want to do it. And that's a big part of why I'm, I'm wanting to be a part of this. And yeah. so my hopes and dreams, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, but yeah. And, and some would say, you know, if, if, if you've got a, a theological lens, again, there might be some gamers listening, and, and, you know, again, this may be a hard podcast for you to hear. You want us to get to the gaming stuff, you know, but um, if you're listening to this, because uh, we've made no apologies for this, and we've ho- hopefully been very clear that this is a this is content that we don't just want to bring to you to help you be a better gamer. We want you to be, you know, better at life. We want to add value to your life. We want you to actually find God. That is the ultimate goal for this, and that might shut some of you off, but again, just stick with us, but... Um, what's been so cool. Again, if you have a theological lens, you might say, well, God is sovereign and he can use any, anything and everything, you know, regardless of how stupid and silly it is and all this stuff. And I get it. Some of you may think gaming is silly and stupid and all this. And maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but here's what I do know, that because we got connected and, and, and we did without apology, we got connected because we were nerds, man. Mm-hmm. We were gamers. Right on. There's no way around it. Okay, we, we would not have been, you know, connected otherwise. And since then, you know, I, seriously, best men at, at each other's weddings. You know, <laughs> yeah, I got mm-hmm. to perform both weddings. I mean, the the trajectory of our lives, all of us, man, has, I would say, prob- I have no doubt has been changed to some degree. Yeah. Um, because we allowed, I'll say that, because we allowed um, something like gaming, man, something like, you know, our uh, nerdisms, you know, to, uh, to be okay. Yeah. We allowed it to connect us. We weren't afraid of it, ashamed of it, um, maybe a little bit embarrassed of it. Sometimes that's probably okay. You know, it's a little weird to be a nerd sometimes. It's a little weird to be a Christian sometimes. Yeah, right on. Um, mm-hmm. But we allowed it to connect us, and man, it's just been so it's been so great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. All right. um, I know you're a native to where we are. You know, <laughs> you, you don't have this grand. <laughs> I moved across the country, and <laughs> sold everything I own. 
No, it's just that. I, 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 like, I'm just I'm just a native to up here in the Northeast, and yeah. you guys moved up here, and I got to, to reap the benefits of <laughs> your life decisions and sacrifices. <laughs> but, I appreciate you putting uh, it in that context for us. That's good. My pride but, handles that well. Thank you. No, <laughs> no but uh, seriously, not in, I guess... I guess not, not, not too far from that initial meet, but I guess for me, even like kind of, <clears throat> kind of going back to where I encountered for the, for the, for the first time in my life, faith mm. that went all the way back into school just with some friends that I had made. Cause I didn't make friends easy, but I was just very, just kind of kept to myself, yeah. just kind of did my own thing. And some friends discovered some common interests like, playing games, nerding and geeking out about certain things, fantasy and whatnot. Yeah. And it, I, I, I made a few close friends at the time in school. And then one of them said like, Hey, like I, I go to, I go to church and we, we, we started a youth group. Like it's, we, we like to hang out. Like, would you like to come to that? Right on. And yeah. that, that put me on a road to learn more about Jesus and God than I ever thought I would know. Yeah. And that yeah. changed the trajectory of my, trajectory of my life yeah i'll just because i just i just had a good friend that like to mm -hmm. play game talk about games with me yeah right on cool and that leads well, me to my part where we are here yeah yeah, yeah. Well, we could probably talk about that um and and we, i don't know we, we could we want to be you know as good stewards as we can with your time um so what i want to do for the next just probably the next remainder however long this podcast is going to go we'll see um, I want to answer a couple of questions. I think it'll be really helpful. Yeah, I agree. Um, first one is, what is the gamer's table? And I'm going to give you all the questions, all three questions right off the bat. Um, because, uh, to be fair, we may answer um, more than one question with, with one answer, right? So I just want to give mm -hmm. some, some things, though, that we felt was really important. If you're listening, if you want to give this a shot, if you want to continue down the journey with us, um, again, as we change some branding and things, we're not changing who we are, or what we're doing. We're just trying to make it better, right? We're trying to add, add even greater value to what you guys are going to be able to hear us talk about. And uh, the gamer's table is really going to do that for us, I think. So the first thing is, what is the gamer's table? The second thing is, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. And then the third one is, how is this actually, and this is truly a question more of us should ask, I think, with everything in our life, but how is this actually going to add value? Yeah. Um, so what is the gamer's table? I want to read this, and then I want to hear what you guys have to say. And I'm reading this, again, because I just want to, I want to be as clear as I can. right? I want to make sure we get this right. I don't want to just try to say it off, off the whim here. But um, the gamer's table, this is it's a hope, it's the hopeful beginnings. All right? I use those words intentionally. right? Yeah. Hopeful beginnings um, of a community. Now, we've got community among the three of us. But, again, we're trying to. It's, it's a table, right? There's more chairs available than just three chairs, all right? So it's hopeful beginnings of a community connected by common interest, not afraid of those interests, right? Connected by common interest um, to search for and to find what matters most. Yep. I think that's a really great way to, um, to articulate our journeys together in life. I think, again, we, we came together. We got connected by common interest. Yep. We weren't really afraid of that interest. It connected us, which was great, right? Um, but along the way, it has, man, and again, if you have a theological understanding of this, you get what I'm saying, but it, it, it no doubt was used by God to help us grow more and more in tune with what matters most. Mm -hmm. And and it's just our hope, right? So what is the gamer's table, man? Our hope is that we can extend that invitation to other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, You know, you're talking about this and... As you're kind of saying it, like I had this like visualization. Uh, one of the things that we enjoy doing is playing Magic the Gathering. So not just video games, right? But there's tabletop games and things that we get to do. That's right. And uh, yeah, there it started with just a couple of us, right? And we started playing. And we started kind of just like literally figuring out like how the heck does this game work and all that stuff. But as that interest grew and as we got into it more, we began to kind of invite some other friends into it mm -hmm. and kind of get them addicted to the cardboard crack, as it's you know called, right? But there was a problem. The table wasn't quite big enough for us all to like sit down and play, right? And uh, Jake has this table that you know has a leaf in it, right? So if you know what that is, like you unlock things at the bottom, you pull it out, and now the table's a little bit wider. You put a piece in the middle, mm -hmm. and now more people can sit around the table. Yeah. And I remember one of the first times we did that, um, and we were it's like five or six people were playing at that time, and it was like, oh man, like we all sit down, like we don't have enough room, so right, it's like busted the table out a little mm -hmm. bit, right? And we're all crammed around on stools and whatever, but 
I don't know. It just, I kind of have the same visualization of this. So that's kind of where we're at this moment of like there, we found this commonality and this, this opportunity to not just find common interests and do things that were fun and enjoyable, but like you said, has pointed us and helped us find out and live in what matters most. And man, we want to do that with more people. So mm-hmm. this is kind of our metaphorical, like pulling the leaf out, right? You know, yeah. um, there's, there's room around the table for people. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely say that. And again, like I mentioned, we're going to answer a little bit of these questions <laughs> yeah. all kind of at once, right? But we're trying to answer the question, what is the gamer's table? Why are we doing it? How does that value? And I would just, I would, you know, kind of piggyback off of that, that I know for me personally, um, I think I knew from the beginning, you know, Pastor J podcast and all this. I was not trying to do that to, to make it about me. And you, know, and you guys have been a part of it the whole time. And hopefully I've never portrayed that. But um, even for me, I got to the point where I, I'm just like, okay, we, I want to make this as easily accessible to everyone as possible. So I want to include, you know, Joe and Christian and maybe even some others as you guys find your passions and your gifts and your talents and the things that you're good at and and because we're all, even the three of us, we're great friends, but we're very different, right? We're all very different in different ways. We're good at different things, all these different things. And and I wanted to, to be able to invite those things in to leverage them, man, right? If we're going to be gifted and talented to do things, um, let's do something that matters, Yeah. you know? And so as we've gotten to grow and know each other, um, what better way to do it than just open the table up, right? You know, and, and invite more people to sit down. Which, side note, if you know anything about Magic the Gathering, all right, we, we get together, we play Commander, okay? That's the only legitimate <laughs> domesticated form of Magic the Gathering acceptable at the gamer's table. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it is the only <laughs> one that we play, Commander, yeah. yep. okay? Um, and let me just say, usually you play in pods of four. Um, if you ever decide to do like we did and open the table and have, you know, a five or six man pod, um, don't. <laughs> unless you have nothing planned for the rest of your day because um, then you'll have a six hour long game of magic which is pretty miserable um, that's just a, that's totally free <laughs> free advice from the gamers table right there um, yeah so what is the gamers table anything else what is it I could probably um, again we're trying to or, or sort of Firing from the hip a bit with some of this, but I think it's fair to say that um, at the end of the day, man, um, the gamers table is just something that the three of us, and again, I have no doubt as more people begin to sit at the table, you know, some people are going to sit down and they're going to be intrigued by, you know, maybe the faith that we have, um, sort of hope, right? Or maybe intrigued um, by the limitless skill we have when we play Apex Legends, you know, or whatever it might be. Um, people will be, you know, they'll, they'll be interested in things. Um, but here, here's the thing at the end of the day, put a, put a bow on that. What is the gamer's table or why, why the gamer's table? Um, cause we, the three of us, uh, speaking for us, you know, we, we truly do seek to be, we try to imitate, we're going to seek to live out, to be, to walk in the footsteps, to imitate Man, the person that's changed our life the most. Yeah. And I love these two brothers, but they have not changed my life like Jesus has changed my life. Yeah. Right. And they would say the same thing about me and their relationship with Jesus. And so that's truly at the end of the day, again, no apology um, that we're going to give out. I hope there's no apology needed for this, but yeah. we want to leverage, man, leverage the table, you know, leverage the seats, leverage the opportunity, leverage. The audience leverage the influence, the platform. You know, it's amazing to me at how, if done correctly, people will actually pull up a chair to listen to what you got to say. Yeah. It's amazing to me, right? Yeah. And so we don't want to waste it. You know, and, and this maybe maybe jumps us into a little bit more of the the next question: the, the why are we doing this? But you know, we we talked a little bit before we we hit the record button on this, right? You know, like like what is this like? What's why are we doing this, man? What's what's the point? Because like, let's be real. There's a lot of you look if you Google podcasts, there are hundreds, if not millions, of po- different types oh, yeah. of podcasts of everything yep. that you could want to consume. Man, there's there's so much different stuff. So like, we didn't want to just do something for the sake of doing it. And this idea that, man, I want to live my life in the best way that I can that imitates Christ. Because of how much it's changed me, because yeah. of how much Jesus has changed me, like my story is different. The person I am is different than who I once was, and not in some cliche way, not in some kind of like, 
you know, churchy sounds good kind of way, just a genuine like, man, I'm different. Yeah. And I wanted the people to experience that. And, you know, we, we look at scripture and uh, one of my favorite stories, and I think part of what sparked this, the specific verbiage we use too, like we're talking about like the table, right? Yep. You see Jesus sit down at the table with the tax collectors and Matthew, if you're familiar with scripture, if you're not, um, at that time and era and day and age, uh, the, these people called the tax collectors were kind of like the scum of the earth, right? Like people mm-hmm. didn't like them. Yep. Um, and Jesus chose to literally pull up a chair at their dinner table and, yep. do, and have a dinner party with them, right? Mm-hmm. And you have all the religious people outside of the window like being like, what is this fool doing? Like, he's 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 like, what, what's wrong with him? Doesn't he know who these people are, right? And just to see the grace behind Jesus, right? That, mm-hmm. that he was so, didn't care about anything else, right? But yeah. just, I want to find common ground with these people because they deserve me just as much as the religious people right outside who think they're all perfect and all then, right? Yeah, and that's where and, we want to be. And to be to be fair and to be clear, we're, we're, if you're a gamer, if you're a nerd, we're not calling you a tax collector yeah. from Jesus' yes. day. Let's see, scum of the earth, like no scum of the earth. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, but I will say this though. Let's just go ahead and say this. I think um, that the community that we are talking about, and maybe even two that we are engaged in. Um, let's let's not shy away from it. Um, you're oftentimes treated that way. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. There is no doubt about it. Um, I've even had conversations with people, and, and some has been good, and some has been helpful. But but a lot of times it's just not. You know, people have even talked to me, uh, being a pastor and what I do. You know, again, I have a platform, and I have people that are watching and paying attention, which I'm, I'm honored. You know, and I do have to be careful with what I do and what I engage in, and certainly what I say and all these things. Um, but, but sometimes it's it's pretty exhausting to wonder, okay, well, what am I allowed to do? Yeah. Mm. Right? And, and I'll be honest, I would much rather ask Jesus what I'm allowed to do than ask, you know, some other people. Um, and sometimes it's hard, you know, but we want to lean into this this culture, right, this nerd culture and and say, hey, um, that there is a person that truly cares about you. Yeah. And and a, a lot of nerds, man, I'm a nerd, you know, I, I've not necessarily struggled to feel like people have cared about me, um, but I certainly didn't grow up. Um, hearing that God cares about me, yeah, you know, and and to to be able to lean into an environment that maybe wouldn't be leaned into otherwise, exactly, and pull up a chair, say we're here, we're hanging out, um, you are valued, you are loved, you yeah. are worthy um, of, of what's in front of you, man. It's going to be, it's exciting. Um, it's been part of our journey. We just want to make it go deeper. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's, that's good. Um, we sort of a- answered it. Why are we doing it? Right. Um, passions, gifts, talents, uh, specifically speaking, Pastor J podcast to the, the gamers table, the website, just go to the gamers table.com. Um, it's constantly under work. We're trying to just get it where it needs to be. We're trying to figure out, you know, based on our, I mean, we have jobs and things we do. <laughs> this is something we do in our spare time. And, um, we're trying to figure out, you know, where's the niche for us? What are we trying to bring to the table? You know, truly, yep. what do we want to do? Obviously, we're going to be bringing recorded content. We're trying to figure out written content, maybe even game reviews and things like that. And so just bear with us as we figure that part out. But mm-hmm. um, plenty of ways that we're trying to leverage our, our gifts, mm-hmm. our passions, our talents. And um, I've actually kind of grown into this habit of asking people as a pastor when I'm leading the church and leading people. I've done this to the view. Yep. Um, asking uh, the question, what what are you passionate about? What are you gifted to do? What are you passionate about? What are you gifted to do? And something I've learned, we'll talk about this in a minute, but something I've learned is that's a hard, those are actually hard questions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are truly hard questions. Um, and, and we could probably discuss for a, a long time why those are difficult. We won't do that now, I guess. But um, those are hard questions. And so sometimes I have to then ask sort of the follow-up of, okay, well, to get there, what, what do you do to have fun, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but truly, passions and gifts, and as the three of us have begun to learn more about ourselves and each other, man, I think that we, we all three bring some some pretty special things to the table, and so we're trying to share it with you guys. Um, you mean Christians are allowed to have fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Don't don't spoil the ending, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty climactic moment we're going to talk about. But um, for the two of you, man, what, what do you guys feel like as far as, and this is a weird thing, um, and I don't think we even prepped for this. So again, rawness here, but... Good. Um, it's something that I think, man, Christians, the church, we stink at this. We stink at actually being able to say, you know what I'm good at? I'm good at blank. Mm-hmm. I'm good at this. I'm passionate about this. I'm gifted to do this. Now, we stink at it largely because 
We also stink at telling others what we see them being good at, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But for the two of you, man, and I'll I'll step into, but, you know, what are you guys, what are you passionate about when it comes to the gamer's table? What are you gifted to do? What talent are you hoping to leverage um, for this? Yeah. I mean, I'll take I'll take a crack at it and jump in. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's it can be it it can be difficult to think about that stuff because either it's we're worried about like uh, we're wrestling something between humility, between pride, between even sometimes some folks will just have a a nervousness to put themselves out there and just kind of see what happens, see who responds, Uh, but. I know kind of for me what I'm kind of hoping is like I've I I want to do everything I can to leverage everything that I can so for me just I I have a tough time figuring it out but when I do figure it out and when I crack through Mm -hmm. that like writer's block just like I can I don't know I'll just I'll just keep going I'll just write up a storm (laughs) and yes Something just to add to that. I mean, something that you know, watchers, listeners, you may not know about Joe, man. He's he's got a way with words, like in a good way. Um, you'll even hear this, I've no doubt, in the coming podcasts. You know, we'll we'll talk about you know games we enjoy. You know, and and me and Christian, I love you, but we're both the same way with this. We'll be like, yeah, I like this game because it's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like this game because I can shoot people. I like this it's game because it was fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then we turn to Joe. What do you like about this game? And then, like this, just artistic, you know, personification of what this game is meant to be comes out of his mouth. You know, for the next yeah. minute and a half, it's like, oh, thank you for that elaborate explanation. And it, it's all, you know, just a way with words. You know, and something that you're talented, you know, no doubt gifted to do. Uh, I. I don't like admitting that, but I think I also I shouldn't be afraid to just admit the abilities, gifts that I have or can yeah. use. Or just just that I want to use yeah. that I want I, I want I want to take a moment and not just puff puff myself up, but just mm-hmm. puff up that I've been given or I've developed talents and I want to put them to yeah. a meaningful use and keep developing them and keep getting better mm-hmm. at them and using them yeah and I think some of the some of the happiest times in my adult life I've found a full a, a fulfillment when I've set myself on a path to I mean I've done I've done children's ministry but I've very briefly dabbled in like getting into worship Mm -hmm. like like band music worship and every single time i've i've just felt like like okay i can i have the ability to do something yeah i'm going to pursue it but i'm also going to give it up to something that means a lot more than my gratification yeah that's right that's right and i honestly believe what we're attempting to do here with the gamers table i think i think that's just kind of like the next step for me yeah I, I smile. If you're listening to this, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see it, but I'm, I smile when Joe mentioned about um, dabbling in, in worship. Uh, so just go to show. So all you naysayers out there, all right, all you people, yep. I'm not, uh, you know, video games, rather the devil, all this stuff, right? There's plenty of you out there, probably some of you listening. I, 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 I know how you are. Um, this dude has played drums for our church. And how did you learn to play drums? Uh, well, I mean, I put like, like you know, like you, you, you have your games, you have your Guitar Hero, you have your rock band, and I, I sat and played that with the little like dinky drum controller, just has uh-huh. four pads, and I just had a lot of fun listening to music and playing that, and I poured so much time into that back into school. Yep. I got behind a real kit, and I realized like there were so many fundamentals that. Yep. Even, like just directly transfer over. Yeah, and I, I needed to piece a lot more together and practice at it. But and, and, and to be clear, I could lead our church in worship with drums, mm-hmm. but everybody leave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm not saying like to be clear, but but he, he but Joe can play the drums, you know. Yeah. And and he learned the foundation the the foundations, you know, from from playing rock band, which I just it was it always fascinates me, blows me away. Right. Yeah. What about you, Christian? What you got? I know, man. For me. um you know, I, I've back to what Jake was saying earlier. Like he's asked people, and they've like struggled to answer. I was one of those people when he asked me, right? And to spend some time really trying to dig into like 
you know, what are the things I'm passionate about? What are the things that I'm gifted at? And that's still something I feel like I'm wrestling through, and I think it's just part of life. But um, I know for me, you know, I, I love being creative. I love not only just being creative myself, but offering the tools and the, the ability and the accessibility to other people to be creative, um, you know, whatever that needs to look like. You know, for me, like, I love to tell stories, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of my friendships, Joe and I spent a lot of uh, many, many hours sitting around a table playing Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like, mm-hmm. and one of my favorite parts of that is just telling a story that captivates people, um, but not just captivates people, but off- offers them the opportunity to explore themselves and explore ways that they can be creative and have fun and do that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to do that through music, you know, back to the worship thing. I help lead worship at our church and, um, I think just finding ways that can allow other people to embrace creativity, um, you yeah. know, and and whatever that looks like, because there's so many different mediums, um, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that's for me where yeah. I kind of land. Right on. Uh, something from, I'll, I'll answer my own question. You know, this is one for all of us. Um, I, I'm I'm just truly I'm, I'm always and probably growing more so. I'm just fascinated. Uh, I don't know, uh, fascinated by influence. Mm-hmm. And I guess I'll try to break that out a bit. You know, I could have, I, I, I could say fascinated by leadership or fascinated by some of that, but I, I want to say influence because, um, man, we get to influence people all the time. Yeah. And I say we get to, we do, right? We're influencing people all the time. And there's tension there. You know, again, I, I've, I've wrestled through and I still wrestle through some of that tension, you know, of influencing um, you know, being a pastor and then you even shared the story some with me, you know, I've got some, you know, some friends, maybe uh, coworkers, you know, that, that see a pastor playing this certain game. And it's like, <laughs> for some people, this is just so bizarre, right? For some people, it's, that's like attractive. That's like, mm-hmm. that's actually a barrier breaker for them, right? To, to get into, let's not forget again, what we're, we're trying to help people find something greater, mm-hmm. right? And so sometimes that influence that, that I get to have is, is to break down some of those walls, right? To get them closer to that thing that matters. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes, and again, sometimes it's healthy. You know, some of you, you could be listening to this and you might even be that person in my life that I've had this conversation with and it's been helpful. And you might be the person in my life that I've had this conversation with and I've just wanted to, you know, poke my eyes out, right? Because it's just <laughs> been frustrating, you know, but yeah. but I, I get it. There's a tension there in being careful as far as what, you know, what I dabble in. You know, with the influence that I have, right? Getting getting back to that, the influence that I have, because um, we all have the influence, and what we do, people watch it. We are literally creating a venue to invite people to sit down at the table and watch us, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So we we have to be aware of that. And I'm answering that in the what are we gifted and passionate and talented to do? I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate about the. It it wrecked my world when I was in college to realize. That, that you could actually, and you could do this in many ways, but at the time I was really searching for the Lord. I was searching for God. I was learning about Jesus. I was, I was just being revolutionized in my own spirit um, by him. And, and then I began to really think about it. You know what? You can actually get in front of a crowd of people. You can go get on a stage, get a microphone. People will sit in seats and look at you to listen and hear what you have learned about God. Hmm. That blew my mind. And so for the last two decades of my life, I've been fascinated with that. And I've wanted to get in front of people, have a platform and say, let me just tell you what I've learned. Yeah. Not because I got it figured out, but just, you know, because in 10 years I'll be saying something a little bit different, right? I'm always learning. I'm always growing. You know, I'm always chasing after the Lord, um, but it just fascinates me. So I'm just passionate about that. And so therefore I've tried to, to grow uh, my talents and my gifting um, in my ability to communicate in my mm. ability to communicate things that matter most, yeah. you know, so I'm trying to find creative ways to communicate the good news of Jesus with people. That's yeah. what I want to do. And if I can do that in front of a microphone, <laughs> if I can do that sitting at a table with friends, if I can do that, you know, from a stage, if I can do that in front of a camera, you know, playing Baldur's Gate three, <laughs> whatever, man, I want to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's what is the gamers table? Why are we doing it? Um, and the last thing we'll probably go through this kind of quick. Um, but how does this add value? Yeah. Because here's something I've learned. Um, I've, I've learned this because I own a mirror and I look at it, <laughs> right? I look in it. I look at myself. I do take time to, to, to introspect, you know, and to, to consider what I'm doing and why am I doing it. And um, I think it's always really, really helpful to really, you know, ask, is this adding value? Whatever this is, is this adding value? It's part of that tension I even wrestle with as a pastor, right? I'm going to, 
I'm going to play these games. Is it adding value to my life? You know, is it adding value to others, right? What's going on here? So we want to answer that question at the end of the day. You know, how is the gamer's table going to add value to your life? You know, if you're watching it, how is it adding value to you? Not just us, but you. Mm -hmm. um, and then how is it going to add value? Um, if you're listening, of course, as well, how is it going to add value to your life? So we put this together. You can, again, find it on the website, thegamerstable.com. Uh, I'm just going to read out some of these things, and we'll talk about them briefly. Yeah as we wrap up. Um, so we do have some values. We, we've written this down. Um, man, I firmly believe this, that, that values are much more than things written down. They're, mm -hmm. they're much more than things put on a wall. They're much more than just things you learn to memorize and recite. You know, values are things that you live out, right? Mm -hmm. They are things that you demonstrate. They are things that you almost shouldn't have to say. Right, because quite frankly, if you have to tell somebody what you value, you probably don't value it. Yeah. Right. It's the the culture and strategy conversation. Right. You know, the culture, what you do naturally, will always eat your strategy for mm -hmm. breakfast. You know, as Paul Drucker <laughs> says. Um, so what? How does this add value to you? So, a couple things um, we value at the gamers table. The three of us, man, our own lives. The gamers table. We value friendships. Mm -hmm. We value friendships. I'm going to go through them. We'll talk about them. Value friend friendships. We value laughter. Just going to sit there for a second. We'll come back to it. We value laughter, right? We value competition. Hallelujah. <laughs> we value competition. Uh, we value faith. Yep. And we value invitation. Um, there's probably more things, maybe, I don't know, but that, that, that really, we feel like uh, pretty well encapsulates what we're trying to do, Yeah. you know, what we're after. We value friendships. Um, you guys have heard enough of our story on this podcast, even just this podcast alone, probably to understand that uh, we wouldn't be sitting here without that, Yeah. right? Uh, we would not be sitting here without... Um, without friendships because something that I know I'm convinced of, I can't do this alone. Yeah. And I don't mean this as in the Gamers Table podcast. This thing can come and go. I'm not going to be heartbroken over it. Um, I can't do this thing called life by myself. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough. All three of us are fortunate enough to be married um, to very capable, strong women um, that will only get more capable and stronger as life goes on, you know, mm -hmm. um, as long as we do our job to lead them yep. the best way we can. And so I, I've got my wife in my life, I guess is why, I, but, but, I, but I need friendships, yeah. you know. She and I, man, we, we've handled a lot of stuff, just the two of us, you know. Mm. But I'm still convinced that, that we probably couldn't handle everything without friends. Yeah. Mm. So we value friendships. I think it's so important because... We live in the most connected age mankind's ever experienced, and yet we're the most lonely. Mm -hmm. We're the most isolated, just because I can, like I can hop on Twitch right now and find people streaming to thousands of people. I can find people streaming to one, you yeah, know, yeah. and yet there's still this element of loneliness if we're not careful. Yeah. Um, that friendship just breaks down that wall. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for us, you know, we we talked a lot about our friendship, but earlier talking about how like the, the table has expanded, you know, like other people have been brought into that, that without those moments, without that commonality, we probably wouldn't have become friends, but we found this thing that allowed us to start the, mm -hmm. the process, yeah. start the conversation. And now, man, we do life together and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's so much better that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's created community and like whether, regardless if you're, extrovert introvert mm -hmm. just however you approach other people go about your social settings just at the end of the day it's we have that desire for to be seen yeah. or heard or understood yeah that's right to be valued yeah, yeah. It, it takes other people you know <laughs> for us to be valued mm -hmm. Absolutely. you're right we value friendship. We value laughter. Um, this will be a pretty quick one, you know. Uh, let me just—I'll say this on behalf of these two guys. Um, if you're listening to this and you're man, if you call yourself a Christian, if you love Jesus, whatever you want—if that's you, 
it's okay to laugh. It's okay to have fun, right? Yeah. I mentioned it earlier. You know, I love asking the question, what are you passionate about? What are you gifted to do? And then before I know it with most people, I have to eventually get to the question of not just what are you passionate and gifted to do, but okay, let's get you there. What do you do to have fun, right? Because, man, I am telling you, I am convinced. And there's so we could probably do a whole podcast on this. Why fun? We probably should do that, right? Um, there's so many reasons I think that we, we're afraid of fun and we're afraid, but we're just, we're scared of it. We think it, you know, it's just like, it frightens us, you know? Yeah. But my goodness, laugh. Yeah. Have fun. You know, don't be so afraid of what, you know, oh my gosh, I have this emotion that makes me feel good. What, there must be something wrong with that. You know, God must not be glorified in me having fun. This is supposed to be a treacherous life where I encounter peril and persecution, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, probably. But there's also some fun. Yeah. You know, Jesus himself, man, he sat at tables. He he reclined at tables. You ever thought about that? Like, why would that be in the Bible? Yeah. You got to be enjoying yourself if you're going to recline. He was, that wasn't a power move. Okay? It wasn't yeah. like Jesus sat down with the tax collectors and, and the Pharisees outside looking through the window. And he said, you know what? I'm going to show. I'm going to I'm gonna power up. I'm going to show who's boss. I'm going to put my feet on the table. No, he was had to be enjoying himself. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Mary and Martha. Just presence, just being there. Jesus, you chose the greater thing. Just be right here. You ain't yeah. going to go keep it clean and tidy and do all that. Enjoy, right? Yeah. The Bible says I'm the smartest person outside of Jesus ever walked the earth, according to the Bible, King Solomon. <laughs> and he said it himself. There's a time for everything, right? A time to die, a time to live, a time for everything. And so at the end of the day, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Right? good stuff it's a biblical idea it's a biblical principle and if you're not a biblical person then just i'm pretty sure you're somebody who wants to have fun yeah and it's it's out it's available right so we value friendship we value laughter um, we value competition mm-hmm. i could talk i'm just gonna stop <laughs> the value competition what do you guys think about that joe you're a competitive individual <laughs> no, yeah, what do you think about this don't, like don't even get me started i'll come to you <laughs> <laughs> You want to watch some some very fun streams. Just watch one of the most competitive individuals that you'll probably ever meet <laughs> and one of the least competitive individuals yeah. walking the planet hey, and oh. the dynamic between us, you know. I mean, we're having a good time making it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? This is no joke. And if you're listening, watch, you probably think this is crazy, but um, there's been times we've circled back to each other after we've had gaming sessions and we've had to apologize because we were just absolute jerks, you know, yeah. um, which has been good. I mean, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a good thing. I was going to say, for competition, that's that's one of the big things for me. Like, I think there's an innate competitive nature in all of us. Even for people like, I'm not competitive. Like, there's just something inside of us that does that. But for me, one of the things that I, the reasons we say we value competition is because it gives you a little bit peek behind the curtain that yeah. Christians aren't perfect people. Like, we're human. Yep. Like if you've, I get kind of, we were joking about it, but there's definitely like, there's been some streams where, or just games we played where it's like, it's, it was a hard night. It's brutal. We got smacked around, whatever. We had yeah. a hard time and we had to come back later and go like, Hey man, you know, I lost my cool. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like that. My competitiveness got the better of me, but I'm sorry. You know, yep. like I'm not, a, I'm human. Right. Yep. And I yep. think there's some, there's a joy behind that. Cause then we're on common ground, you know, it just helps yeah. us be together. If we're not allowed to be human together, what are we allowed to do? You know, I mean, it's just, it's yeah. wild, you know. I even have a friend that uh, I told him over Christmas, just sharing, you know, I was thankful <laughs> for him. And um, he, he's a gamer, a game with him. And I said, man, you've really taught me how to, how to, how to be, how to extend grace. And when it, when it, when it first landed, I, you know, I think he, he was thinking, you know, am I that bad at the games that, that like, you know, I'm forcing you to just look past my inadequacies as your teammate? You know, what are you talking about? Um, but, but no, what I truly mean, um, is with how I can sometimes get right. Because again, pull the curtain back and look, you know, I want to win, right. I want to win these things, and these games and these I'm competitive. And, and sometimes if my teammate messes up, you know, I'll say something I shouldn't say, or I'll just, you know, whatever. And, um, so, but this, this friend of mine, you know, we have that dynamic together and, and what I've, I genuinely mean it. He has shown me what it means, what it looks like, um, to be a competitor, but to be gracious, you know? So like when I am that jerk to him, you know, like, why don't you do this? You know, he just lets it go. And 
I appreciate that. I'm, I truly am learning how to be more gracious in those moments to realize that I can be competitive and still not think that it determines my life. Mm. Right? Uh, so we value friendship, laughter, competition. We value faith. Yeah. Um, we started this whole podcast, this episode, talking about why the gamers table, and that was certainly mm-hmm. there, you know, because we truly hope that this would just be, if I could say it this way, not to devalue it, but this would just be simply a stepping stone to what really matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love gaming. Uh, I probably will spend uh, the majority of my life engaged in it in some degree, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I never want it to be the point. I never want, that's why competition is such a good thing, right? I never want I never want that to be the point. Yeah. I never want any of this stuff to be the end goal. I want it to always point me to the end goal. Yeah. You know, and for us as believers in Jesus, you know, the end goal for us is to live for him. Yeah. And and I just love the idea that, that the God I believe in is not so intimidated and frightened whenever we say, hey, here's something we love. We don't love it as much as you, mm-hmm. but we love it. And we want to connect the two. And I think God is saying, go with it. Go ahead. Go find the tables you can go sit at. Yeah. Go create a table and invite people to sit at it. And always bring them to me. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. So we value faith. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. I'm sort of taking over here. But I'm just no, trying to get us to the, to the end here. So we value Stuff friendship, that. laughter, competition, faith, and invitation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys talk about that for a second. We, we value invitation. What does that mean? I mean, I guess just kind of as we've as we've talked about, like just in our faith and just looking back into Matthew, just seeing how Jesus was welcoming to people to the to the to the table, just like right yep. there, he invited yep. people in. And as we're doing our thing, as we're exploring our talents, leveraging our passions, talking to people, like why why don't we emul in emulating that? aspect of jesus why can't we just invite people into our table yeah like it's good like i like i think i think we would agree as jesus set the example all should be welcome in yeah that's right mm-hmm. yeah we i think we'd like to explore that opportunity i'd i'd, I'd like to the way that again just a friend way back when in school mm-hmm. just invited me mm-hmm. to come in we were just playing games and he invited me to come in i i'd like to extend that to other people yeah, I think for me, and you probably want to have a Game Boy sitting here on the <laughs> on the table. Um, I think video games offer something, you know, mm-hmm. something different for different people. I think for me, for a long time, it offered escape from mm-hmm. a life that I wasn't quite thrilled with, wasn't quite um, happy with. It gave me something to go to that could just kind of drown out the noise for a bit, right? And I could just kind of fall into. But as I got older, I found out that that doesn't last very long. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It kind of fades away. And what was an escape now becomes a, becomes a crutch for me. And then mm-hmm. I found Jesus, right? And I found the thing, the person that made the noise drown away, mm-hmm. right? That yeah. even in the midst of my circumstances, maybe not changing, my life did, right? And so I want to take this thing that's a tool that provides opportunity to connect to other people and say, hey, this is a good thing, but let me show you a great thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, you'll, if you'll come along, if you'll trust me, if I mean, you don't know me from Adam, right, but if we'll sit down at the table together and mm. just maybe pursue this journey a little bit with one another, there might be some hope on the other side of it. Yeah. Um, and, man, so I, I want to do everything I can to use every tool given to me to invite people in. Well, isn't that, man, as we, as we like, land the plane here, I, I just, I'm reminded to listen to you guys talk. I would guarantee, again, even, man, listeners, I hope this is valuable to you. I hope you guys are, are hearing not just us talk and blabber on and, you know, future hopes of something that we, you know, is this, this, this brainchild that we have or whatever this thing is going to become. But um, just just think about this for a second. The things in your life that, that matter most, if you're a believer in Jesus, I know you would say it on paper, well, that matters most. Right? <laughs> so think about that for a minute. Um, at some point in your journey, somebody said, hey, why don't you join me? Yeah. I mean, just think about that, right? And and how dare us, truly, how dare us believe that God can't use these things that we enjoy? Yeah. You know? 
So man, uh, that yeah, that's why we value invitation because we, we we've been invited at some point or another. Yeah. I mean, come on, man, we we were invited at some point or another along the journey of our lives to sit down at a table and to hear about something that somebody thought was really important. Yeah. And we love games, but if you sit down at our table, you're you're going to hear about games, but you're also going to hear about something even more important than that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the future, you know, we don't know what, exactly what content's coming and when, but we're, we're just we're, we're open. We're trying to, again, engage in things we love, right, and then make a space for all of you to be able to listen and to watch. And, you know, we have future hopes of, of having some recorded moments of some tabletop games. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, we're going to have live streams coming your way. We're going to, um, the three of us, divide and conquer with some of that, maybe all at the same time and doing different things. And yep. um, just the, the, the future, I'm excited for it. Um, I hope it's, again, going to bring some things that add value to your life. Um, but here's how we're going to end the podcast. Real quick, uh, lightning round. Taking a shift. <laughs> we're all serious, talking about Jesus, things that matter. But now we want to talk about, for the next few seconds, um, what video games can we, can you guys not wait? Or let's just say this, what gaming experiences can you not wait to encounter in 2024 because it's right here man games are coming out all the time we're nerds we know when they're coming out we're ready we're pre-ordering stuff we can't wait yeah um what are you what are you most anticipating to get to experience this year as far as gaming is concerned i know for me um yeah there's a couple cool things coming up new pokemon games can be announced anytime um, didn't come out this year, but last year, Dead Space Remake, um, one of my favorite games of all time. Okay, yeah. Looking forward to diving into the remake. I haven't got a chance to yet, but okay. it's going to be a good time. I like it. Joe, what you got? Uh, well, right around the corner, there is a, um, the new Yakuza game, or, well, it's, now we're calling it Like a Dragon. They're having fun with their branding and constantly <laughs> renaming and those naming schemes. But yeah, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. Huh? Like, the story of the first one was good, and... It was it was an amusing time. It was a neat game. So I'm just curious to see how the next one turns out. Okay. Uh, and, and you also have written uh, a bit of a review response on one of those games that's on the website, right? Yep. Yeah. Which game yeah, was it? Yeah. The um the previous one to this. Uh, okay. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Naming <laughs> schemes, but there it is. Yeah, Look at that. So this one's the sequel. Yeah. yeah so you can find Joe's uh, response to that game on the website. Yeah. What else? Any other game? I know you've got another one. I'm going to well, let you pick, say it. Well, Pikmin 4. <laughs> Pikmin 4. <laughs> what? Pikmin's good. It's great. They work so hard. Yes. yes. <laughs> Pikmin work so hard and it's dangerous out there. Uh, it's sort of like what Christian mentioned. It's not a game that is coming out this year, but um, just sort of the backlog of games. Um, Alan Wake 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I played Alan Wake 1, not all the way through. Fascinating game. Suspenseful. It was just really cool. And yeah. um, the second one's come out. And I would... Uh, I would truly enjoy playing that game, I think. Right on. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's what we can't wait to do this year. Um, Actually, let me add one more, right? So those are video games. Um, I said gaming experience. Um, I actually can't wait to create (laughs) a Magic the Gathering commander deck where I can win, pummel my opponents into submission (laughs) um, with rads. And if you don't know what that is, it's fine. Um, but the game Fallout, they're going to have a Fallout branded Magic the Gathering set coming out. Yeah. yeah. And you can actually beat your opponents by giving them enough rads that they die. <laughs> Radiation, by the way, is what rads is short for. Yeah. So I can't wait to do that. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's yeah, going to be I'm great. I'm totally forward to being radiated to death. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching and listening. Again, hope this uh, wasn't too long for you. Hope you stuck with us. Um, and if you made it this far, thank you. Uh, we're honored that you would listen to what we get to put out there. And in the future, we just cannot wait to keep opening up seats, expanding the table, and asking you to have a seat and just learn what we're learning and ultimately find something that actually matters yeah. um, more than anything else you'll ever encounter. And we believe that that is Jesus. So we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Pastor Jay, Christian, Joe, man, see you.